raven's flock, the flock rundown is the place to be. My man Ryan has been a lifelong Ravens fan since he was born. So I'm telling you now, it's about to go down. The podcast, the flock rundown. Ravens, baby. Nothing gets better than waking up and wondering how high we can fly. Tune in. Motionless brainwaves attempt to swim their way to sense can't tame the untamed. Appreciate you, Ray. What's up, Ravens fans? My name is Ryan, and welcome back to another episode of the Flock Rundown. The Ravens just lost to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers 26 to 20 in the final preseason game of 2023. I'm filming this right after the game. I'm actually just going to make this episode my 53 man roster prediction episode. I don't have enough to talk about that game that we just watched there just wasn't a lot of key players that were playing but I think it's a good time to make my roster prediction video I'll drop this tomorrow so you'll probably be seeing this on Sunday but I'm filming this right after the game I want to announce the winners as well of the $50 giveaway and I said winners because there was finally a tie or already a tie um, so shout out to Abdi Hassan who guessed 140 yards. The final was 137. It was initially 138 and then like five minutes later they changed it to 137 because I have a screenshot of when it was 138. Um, so it is 137. And then Anthony Russo, 5552 had 134, so he was also three away. So shout out to Anthony and shout out to Abdi. They're each getting $25 of the $50 giveaway, and we'll resume this throughout the regular season. There's no game next week, so we will not have a giveaway next week. But anyway, let's get into this 53-man roster prediction. So we're going to start with the quarterbacks, and we obviously have Lamar Jackson and Tyler Huntley on the active 53-man roster. Now, don't forget we're allowed to bring an emergency third QB to game day that's not on that 53-man active roster, and I believe that's going to be Josh Johnson, but he's not going to be listed as one of the 53 guys. And Josh Johnson absolutely balled in the first quarter tonight in the Tampa Bay game, and I'm pretty sure he's a lot and Josh Johnson looked great, especially that first drive tonight in that Tampa Bay game. Pretty sure he's a lock to be that emergency QB because they played Anthony Brown the entire game. And they sat Josh Johnson pretty quick after that drive. So Josh Johnson will be the emergency QB, but I'm leaving him off of this 53-man prediction because Lamar and Huntley will be the only ones there as long as Huntley's healthy. And I want to preface this ahead of time. There's going to be a lot of roster moves even to the 53 man. There's going to be a lot of guys that make this 53 man roster and then are immediately put on IR or PUP. Other guys that they're trying to avoid from putting on the practice squad will get moved around, but we're just doing the initial 53 man. So there will be a few injured players that got hurt that also are going to be on this 53 man roster. And then I'm sure they will get moved to IR as it continues and we'll bring in someone in their place. So it's not final. It's never final. This is a fluid roster throughout the entire season, throughout the entire playoffs. There's always little tricks. Let's put this guy out for the year and save him for next year. I'm sure the Ravens are going to do a lot of little tricks to make sure that they can hold on to as many of these guys as they can. But these are my predictions for the initial 53 before all of that. Running backs, I think it's also pretty straightforward. We have J.K. Dobbins, Gus Edwards, Justice Hill, and then the only real debate was Mel. Melvin Gordon or Keaton Mitchell, but I feel like that was answered tonight because Keaton Mitchell didn't even play, didn't even suit up. He was chilling on the sideline with the rest of the starters, and he deserves it. You know, I'm not saying Melvin Gordon played bad or did anything to lose that spot. But Keaton Mitchell earned it, and it just makes sense. He's young. He can play special teams. He's explosive, and uh, I'm pretty sure Keaton Mitchell's on this roster. Next up, we got the wide receivers, also pretty straightforward in my opinion. Odell Beckham Jr., Rashad Bateman, Zay Flowers, Nelson Aguilar, Devin Duvernay, and then that sixth spot. He's been winning it all preseason long. Tylen Wallace, he looked pretty good again tonight. Demas made some great plays tonight. He could definitely be a fit for the practice squad. 
Um, I'm sure they're going to try and send Prochet to the practice squad. There's going to be a lot of guys that they're going to try and keep on the practice squad and float back and forth. But Tyler Wallace got that sixth spot, and I'm pretty sure these are the six wide receivers that'll be on the 53-man roster. Tight end slash fullback, I'm going to say pretty much just tight end because I think Ricard is a tight end now. But we got Mark Andrews, Isaiah Likely, Charlie Kohler, and Pat Ricard. Vokalek was the only question mark, and he definitely did enough this preseason to deserve to play in the NFL. Um, but I don't think that he's going to be on the active roster even though he probably deserves it. I just think that this tight end room is too deep, and I think Pat Ricard is too versatile with his blocking. He brings something different to the table than Vokalek would bring. Vokalek is kind of bringing what we already have there, especially like in Andrews and in Kohler, and then likely is more of a pure receiver. But Vokalek is similar to Andrews and Kohler, not as good as Andrews, but you know what I'm saying. Like play wise, he he does the same things, and we already have greatness there. And I just don't feel like he's going to be able to make the active roster. But I know they're going to try everything they can do. This guy might tear a fingernail, and they're going to put him on season-ending IR or something so that they can hold on to him. I think that they want to hold on to Vokalek for sure. Um, not sure if they're going to be able to or not, but I don't think he's going to make the active 53 man roster, unfortunately. Offensive tackle, I'm going Stanley. Moses, left tackle, right tackle. Makari is a backup tackle, and Falele is a backup right tackle, who can also back up at left tackle as well. I think that those four are pretty straightforward as well. There's not much debate there. I'm going with those four guys. Falele looked incredible in the preseason, and we didn't see much of the other three at all, which is always an indication if they're not hurt that they're starting and that their position's locked. To round out the offense, we're going to go with the guards. And I got Simpson, who Harbaugh already announced is our starting left guard. Um, no surprise there. We've been saying that for a while, and he deserves it. So we got Simpson. We got Zeitler. We got Linderbaum at center. Mustafer is the backup center. And then this is where the debate is, right? A lot of people are saying Sala here just because he was competing with that left guard spot. And I totally hear you, and he's a rookie. I totally get that. And Salah very well may make this active 53-man roster. But I'm going out on a limb, and I'm saying that Ben Cleveland makes the active roster. I think that Sala is going to get shelved on the practice squad and could make some game days. You know, if anybody's banged up whatsoever, Salah's going to be like one of the first linemen pulled in. And uh, But I'm going with Ben Cleveland. I've been watching more film. I've been singling on him. And I feel like he deserved more of a shot at left guard. I feel like he's not playing awful. I read into it early just because I trust the coaches so much. And I read into him not even getting a shot at left guard as a sign like he's not even close. You know, he's not even as good as Salah. They're not even giving him a chance at left guard. He's only playing right guard. But if you watch him play at right guard, he's not awful. He's definitely had a few mistakes here and there, but Salah had a lot more mistakes. And I know he's a rookie, and he's got a ton of room to grow, and I love Salah's potential. I'm definitely not saying that he doesn't deserve to be on this team by any means, and he very well may make this roster. I could totally be wrong. These are just my predictions. But I think we go Ben Cleveland and try and figure out a way to keep Salah on the practice squad. That's my prediction. That's definitely up for debate. I had a hard time picking which one. This was definitely one of those positions where I was like, who's going to make that spot? You know, are we cutting Cleveland? I feel like Cleveland is more ready to contribute right now to our season than Sala is. But I could totally be wrong. Like I said, these are just my predictions. I'm going with Ben Cleveland making the active roster. Let's head over to the defense, which I think is a lot less predictable. The offense is kind of straightforward. So D-line, I'm going Michael Pierce, Travis Jones, Justin Matabuke, Broderick Washington. It's hard to argue those four. Pretty sure those four are locks. They've been locks. Travis Jones has absolutely flashed all preseason long. I could not be more excited about what he's going to bring to this team and this defensive line, to this run defense, to the pass rush even. Travis Jones is a force, man. And uh, he's also extremely young, so his future is really, really bright. And he's going to be a dominant player for the Baltimore Ravens defense for years. At edge, we're going Adafe Owe, David Ajabo, Jadavian Clowney, and Tavius Robinson, the rookie. I think that this is also pretty straightforward. Tavius Robinson would be the only one that 
would have a chance to possibly not make it, but I think he's done enough. I think he brings something to our defense. Um, and then obviously Owe, Ajabo, and Clowney are locks. Ojabo is scaring me a little bit. I've uh, been riding the offseason hype train quite a bit on Ajabo just from his flashes last year, his college tape, everything we've been hearing in training camp. But I'm not going to lie, his tape in the preseason definitely doesn't blow me away. I don't think he's playing awful by any means, but he has not flashed questionable decisions in the run game and just not getting pressure on the quarterback. And he played quite a bit tonight. You know, we were talking earlier about, oh, he only had a few drives, small sample size in the previous preseason games. I think he played like three quarters tonight. Now, he wasn't a three down rusher. He came out a little bit, but he was in for like three quarters and we're just not seeing him. He's just not putting a lot of pressure. I saw him get around the edge once or twice, but the quarterback got the ball out of his hands pretty quick. He did make a good move to get around the edge there, but he's not flashing. I'm still staying optimistic. I think he's just filled with a ton of talent, and I feel like he's going to put it together, especially when these games really count. I felt like he was holding back a little bit earlier in the preseason. I don't know if I feel like he held back a ton tonight. I'm slightly concerned. I'm like a 3 out of 10 concerned about Ojabo this season. I'm not really that concerned about his future. I feel like he's such a talented player, and he has the right mindset to to really grow, and he's so young. He's so inexperienced playing football, period. He hasn't even been playing football for that many years, especially at the highest level. So he has so much room to grow. But I'm slightly concerned for this season. I'm really glad we got Clowney to free up Ajabo and Owe a little bit. We didn't see Owe at all, which is probably a good sign. That obviously means that the coaches are sure of what they got in Owe, and they don't need to see him in the preseason at all. But how much they played Ajabo tonight tells me this guy needs some work. And uh, so, yeah, I'm like a 3 out of 10 concerned. If the weeks start piling up and he's not getting to the quarterback, I'm going to be really concerned. But I... Uh, Hopefully he can put it together and really start contributing early in this season. Now, you might be wondering why I didn't put Tyus Bowser on this list. It's because he's on the non-football injury list. And with the non-football injury list, you're allowed to not put them on the active roster and kind of bring them back as he fit. He can't practice. He hasn't been practicing. So that's why I left him off. He hasn't practiced at all. If he comes back to practice and they activate him, then obviously he's going to make this 53-man roster. Tyus Bowser will be on this roster, but as it stands, there's no way they can put him on there right now. He's on the non-football injury list still, and if he goes into the season with this, my understanding is that he has to miss the first four games, so I'm not saying that'll happen. He definitely could play week one. We have two weeks until the regular season. There's plenty of time for Tyus Bowser to be able to come back, but as it stands, me making this video right now, he can't make the roster. He's on the non-football injury list. But whenever he is healthy enough, he's obviously going to come back. Tyus Bowser is going to make this team. He's going to be a big contributor to this team. I just can't put him on this list right now because he's on the non-football injury list. So we'll wait for him to get healthy, and then he'll be on this active roster. Inside linebackers going Roquan Smith, Patrick Queen, Trenton Simpson, Malik Harrison, and Deshaun Phillips. I feel like... Phillips and Simpson were the only question marks here. Roquan and Patrick Queen obviously making the team. Malik Harrison's going to make the team. Trenton Simpson, we just invested such a high draft pick in him. And he's an athletic freak. He can play special teams. He flies around the field. We can use his speed to blitz. I definitely think he's making the team. Phillips could not make the team, but I feel like he has done enough. He's shown up all camp. He's been solid in the preseason. I feel like he's going to make this roster. He can play special teams as well. I wouldn't be mind blown, I guess, if he didn't make the team, but I really feel like he is going to make this team. Now we'll go to cornerbacks, which I had the hardest time selecting these guys, honestly. There's so many moving parts. You have to put the guys that got injured, like Marlon Humphrey and Pepe Williams, on here for now. They're probably going to head to IR. Pepe's definitely heading to IR. I'm not sure about Marlon Humphrey, if he's going to be able to play in week one or two. But if Humphrey's not ready, they're going to move him to IR and then bring up another corner that they have on the practice squad. So this is definitely going to be a lot of moving parts. But here's where I'm at right now. I'm going Marlon Humphrey, Rock Yasin, Ronald Darby, Jalen Armour Davis, Brandon Stevens, Pepe Williams, who's going to IR, 
Seymour, and our Darius Washington. Now, where's Caillou Blue Kelly? I think Caillou Blue Kelly will take Pepe Williams or Marlon Humphrey's spot. But since Pepe Williams and Marlon Humphrey got hurt during camp, they have to be placed on IR. They're not a non-football injury list. They got hurt during football. It's not the same thing as Tyus Bowser. So there's different rules. So they have to kind of put them on that initial roster and then move them afterwards. So Caillou Blue Kelly is going to be on this team. He's going to plug in to Pepe Williams' spot. But I don't think Caillou Blue Kelly, as it stands, makes the initial one. But I think he will be moved up. So that means Arthur Mullet might go to the practice squad as well. We got Hayes going on the practice squad. There's a lot of corners that we've been seeing a ton of in preseason that will be on our practice squad still and this is just going to be a moving parts thing until we get fully healthy but as it stands that's my predictions it could very well move Caillou Blue Kelly to the active 53 man right away and not risk it but I don't really feel like he's played well enough this preseason to contribute to our team at all this year um, I'm not saying that he can't keep growing and get better, but as it stands right now, I have not seen enough from Caillou Blue Kelly, especially in coverage, for me to trust him as a starter on our defense to be tossed out into the fire. But we'll see. I feel like the cornerback spot is the most interesting and the hardest to predict by far be just because there's so many injuries. We don't know what's going on with Marlon Humphrey. How quick is he going to be back? Do they need, even need to move him to IR? There's just so many question marks. Um, we're not going to see Pepe Williams. That's a pretty surefire answer. So I think Caillou Blue Kelly will move into his spot, but it could be somebody else. Maybe they don't believe in Caillou Blue Kelly at all. I just feel like they just invested a fifth round pick. They're not just going to let him go. So I feel like he will be on this roster, just not initially, right? Not the initial 53 man because they have to put Pepe on there until they move him off. At safety, I'm going Marcus Williams, Kyle Hamilton, Geno Stone, and Daryl Worley. I feel like Worley's the only debatable one out of all those. Geno Stone, Kyle Hamilton, Marcus Williams definitely making this roster. Worley, I think just because of his versatility, I know he said he's a full-time safety, but he could play some corner. And he's just very versatile. He can kind of move him all around the field. And he's been playing meaningful minutes for this team before. He can also play special teams. I think Worley makes this team. But I can hear an argument for us going in a different direction to add another spot somewhere else. But my prediction is that Worley does make the active roster. And then to wrap it all up, special teams, we're going Justin Tucker, Jordan Stout, Tyler Ott. I think that's pretty straightforward. Those guys are definitely going to make the team. And that rounds out the 53. Um, these are just my predictions. I'm sure I'll get a few wrong. I'm sure Sala might make it over Cleveland or Worley doesn't make it or we go with some different cornerbacks. Um, but this is where I'm at. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are, which, which do you disagree with. Uh, I'm sure we do agree on a lot, but which ones are you disagreeing with and why? Love to hear your thoughts as well. And the preseason is officially over. We got two weeks until week one. I can't wait. Can't wait to see these starters out there. We haven't seen the starters at all, really. A lot of other teams are playing their starters, at least for a few drives. The Ravens decided to go for health, and uh, I'm not mad at it, especially after the injury-riddled seasons we've had these last two years, so... I, uh, I'm all for it. We're rolling into week one pretty healthy. Cornerbacks, definitely the biggest question mark by far still. But yeah, congrats to the giveaway winners. Hope you guys are enjoying your weekend. I appreciate you tuning in to another episode of the Flock Rundown. Have a beautiful rest of your day, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Motionless brainwaves attempt to swim. They wear the sense contain the untamed.